Welcome to Talking Tuesday. I am your host, Fancy Quant, and today we're going to talk about career progression and jobs versus careers in the quant realm. So I was going to read a comment off of YouTube here. I can't find it. Um, I got it before break. So yes, I took this massive break uh, from YouTube, from podcasting. Um, I'm still creating content kind of behind the scenes. I took a full break off, as many of you know. But there was this comment that somewhat focused around career progression and jobs versus careers. And I think it was really well worded, but I can't quite find it on my massive page of comments that I've never responded to. As I get so many now, it is just challenging to keep up with everything. But I'm going to dive in here to a little bit about what it's like working in the industry, Uh, the progression of this as well. Again, I'm going to come from the banking side here. Uh, you can come from the investing side on this. So if you're all excited and thrilled about you know hedge funds and being millionaires uh, and all some of these, I don't know, fluffy, lighthearted things that people like to think about Wall Street and on the buy side, not all of them are true. But in reality here, you start a career off on a lowly position here. So this is where I come into the picture on career development for many people. Um, you start off typically... So let's just talk about the roles here. For quants, we don't typically start off as analysts on the banking side. This is just not really heard of. Um, I think it's really odd when banks call them analysts, for example. Um, So when I came into my first role, I was a, oh man, I was called a risk officer. So it was something that was a little bit higher. It technically had to be reviewed, I think, by some executives or executive board to be assigned the title to that individual. It paid significantly more uh, than other starting positions here. So you could take a bank, you could take somebody else with an MBA, uh, you could take somebody else with an undergrad and you're making more money than them because you have a skill that nobody else really has. Uh, And often they hired PhDs, they hired some master students such as myself, but the majority of it was going to be PhDs. So when you require a master's, you require a PhD as a minimum, uh, you're going to need to pay them a bit more. Um, But you're going to start off typically as some sort of role like that. So at other firms, they have analysts as well, and they bake this in. And these are typically undergrads who are just doing analytical rigor and work. There's maybe two banks in the U.S. that do this that I would consider medium, small size banks. All the big banks don't do this. But then other banks, again, start at associate level. So a risk officer is the same thing, more or less, as an associate. Um, And so you have kind of an associate level and you can have different tiers of associates. Uh, Some banks will have titles such as uh, like associate, senior associate, uh, associate vice president, vice president, senior vice president. uh, And then typically you have like, I don't know, an, an associate director or a director title and then managing director is considered like the top. Uh, You know, I absolutely hate... Let me adjust my camera here (laughs) for those of you on YouTube. Uh, I absolutely hate the titles and the structuring because every single bank does it differently. Um, Every industry does it differently as well, which is really annoying. So I, for example, have a title of associate director. And yet when you look at other industries, they go, oh, you're only a director? Like, I'm a vice president. Uh, A bank's vice president is lower than director. So that's kind of the tiering here. Um, again, on the investing side, I'm not going to cover it too much. You have similar things. Uh, the role, though, a lot of people want on the investing side is going to be that portfolio manager title, right? You think you're the big shot. You're making the decisions. Uh, you're reviewing the teams that are doing the analytical work, the trading, and putting everything together. Uh, that's kind of what you're seeking on the investing side. On the banking side, typically managing directors, kind of that top title that you really want. So there's a large problem with this, though. And it comes down to the skill base and it comes down to the goals. So when you are a quant in general, and this is what I see with a lot of individuals, you start a career, uh, you learn a lot, you're involved with your colleagues, you're, I don't know, you're just doing quant work in general. And then there gets to be this point where you start to cap out. And what I mean by this is that they have roles which are called individual contributor roles and then they have management roles. The issue being in finance, which is very different from what I've seen in tech, is that as soon as you start hitting like your first level of management, 
you start to cut back on the actual quant work that you do. And then as you climb through the ranks to like a director into a managing director, you basically don't touch code anymore. So it's this very high theoretical, like, I don't know, I imagine in my mind, like a puppeteer, you know, they've got their hands out and they've got these, you know, senior associates underneath of them, maybe an associate director who's doing some managing of projects, uh, but they just don't code anymore. Or there's rarely any coding, at least at really, really large banks. This is different and can be different at smaller banks. But the further you get away from the bottom tiers, so the higher up you really go here, you start to lose all of your analytical skills. And they start telling you the only thing that matters is you understand risk management at a very high level. So for those of you not familiar with quant finance and banking, uh, banks don't like to call quants quants because it seems like you're actually there to make money. Uh, it's much safer, so put it in air quotes, safer to call us uh, risk managers uh, because regulators think that somehow risk managers are really smart and safe, uh, but quants are deadly and risky given the 2007-2008 crisis. So when I say risk management, I'm talking quant finance, building models, validating models. Um, but you lose all your skills and then individuals start finding that it's really hard to jump from one venue to the next. Uh, and so just for some color here as well, most of these managers aren't going to have business backgrounds. So business students like to think, okay, I'm going to get an MBA. I'm going to be on the management track and they're going to put me in charge of everybody and I'm going to tell them what to do. And this works a lot in finance, which is, I think, so not absurd and ridiculous because you have this almost zero experience, knowledge, expertise uh, to be even running a firm or a bank uh, or even a basic department, unless you've done the bottom end work. You understand how the components and pieces of your daily job work. And so for quants, you're seeing a shift now of more and more managers over the quant realms are actually quants who have made it through the quant side and are now taking on management roles in the quants. But you end up in this conundrum now, of, do you really want to let go of your quant skills? Right, and a lot of people say, oh, I don't really care. I wanna be a portfolio manager. I wanna be a managing director, right? That's my goal. And I think it's a really terrible goal, to be quite honest. I think it's really hollow in a career and it's really depressing. I mean, so let's say you reach managing director, portfolio manager, in your mind, or at least in many people's minds, you think like you're gonna be really happy and it's thrilling and it's exciting and you're the big shot and everyone's gonna respect you and love you. Uh, in reality, it's just a job right? Like you show up, you do your job and you go home. Um, I think this is what a lot of people miss, right? They think somehow they're going to be this genius or they're going to be making so much money. It's not even going to matter. And it takes you so much effort, so much work to get to those roles in general that by the time you get there and you're making really good money, it's great. Trust me. It's great making good money. But you start to realize that you could always have more money. So it's like, do you really want to work a lot harder? So for those of you that don't know the amount of work it requires, the amount of politics you have to get involved in, and all that nonsense, uh, how difficult it is to climb the ladder gets exponentially harder as you get higher and higher and higher. And part of this is the fact that organizations are hierarchies. Uh, you have a lot of quant analysts, or you have a lot of employees on the bottom, and then as you climb the ranks, there are fewer and fewer and fewer positions. And so when you finally do get one of these roles, right, and you do earn your way in there, like you've already killed yourself to the point that, you know, it's it's so hard to get there that I think a lot of times it's a hollow victory. Like, okay, I have the title now and I'm getting paid, so what, right? And I think this is where quants, myself included specifically here, is that it's hard to separate and say, I don't, I want to make more money, right? And I want to manage people and I want to build quant teams and I want to help other quants develop, which if you watch my YouTube channel in general, since this is from the podcast, uh, I spend time wanting to educate people and help people career-wise. And yet, as you get more in the senior roles, a lot of times you get away from the quant side. You don't see the problems. You don't get to work with new data and explore things. And so you end up in this weird quandary where it's like, I'm basically going to throw out everything I've worked so hard to get to, to get to a different goal here. And I don't think a lot of quants fully understand this a lot of times. So, I mean, going through the basics here, right? You need an undergraduate degree in something STEM most likely. Uh, for a master's, if you're gonna use that as your quant degree, you need a STEM master's degree, or you need a PhD in something STEM. So 
getting to that position takes a lot of money, a lot of time, and I see a lot of students specifically on my YouTube channel in my podcast here as well, right? Uh, you're trying to figure out how do I get those skills to get the starting job. But when you start looking at the long-term strategy, you don't realize often if you work really hard and you become the world's greatest quant and then you tap out basically in the lower tiers of individual contributors, are you going to be able to throw all that away and kind of step away from it to go into management? And it's a really challenging conundrum because there aren't a lot of firms that actually value the quants. So this should not be surprising. Uh, even firms that are toted as great and amazing quant firms. I've heard horror stories of people working there. I've seen, I'm going to say work from them. <laughs> I've had interactions with people that have worked there. I have not been very impressed with their quantiness. Um, and so it's hard to find somewhere to work just in general that you like to work, that has quant squ skills. And then... If you're doing like me, my struggle now is like, I do a lot of quant work, I'm an associate director, I'm supposed to be using more resources, uh, and again, people don't like the fact that I just do all the work myself, I do it in a quarter of the time as the other employees, and I can just run like crazy by myself without anyone underneath of me. And yet, for projects, I still bring in resources. So I bring in employees from other teams, or I bring in employees on our team, or I bring in consultants, for example, that we have on on basically higher here and yet it's it's hard for me to step away from it it's not that I want to do every single part of the work like I would love to be able to step away as a manager but I'd also like to be involved with the quantitative side of things of leading directing educating training uh, challenging those employees under you right it's not necessarily just like here do ABC it's here's a project you need to validate uh, this is the general structure. It's up to you to come up with something. And then as you as a manager, again, as the quant side, it'd be nice to be able to actually challenge you academically and to see new and exciting ideas and the way you, that you approach your problems here uh, to see if we're getting the best out of you, right? Whether you're a model developer, quant researcher, validator, whatever. Uh, but it's hard to make this decision, I think. And for me, it's like, I don't know, I don't want to have my, <laughs> I want to have my cake and eat it too, right? But I don't know if it's actually a possible situation here. <sighs> um, and so I think a lot of people keep asking me this question. It's hard to answer because there's not really a clear answer. They say, Dimitri, what is the path of quants? Like, where do you go in the long term, right? Do you become a portfolio manager? Do you become a managing director? Do you become a chief risk officer? And the answer is, it depends and it depends what you want to do and it depends how good you are because as you know, right, just quants, you spend so much effort becoming super academic and super focused on quantitative topics. And yet if you're going to spend all that effort, all that time, all that money getting to that point, I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to kind of throw it away to go into management. So trying to keep the two halves and finding a firm that values both of them and allows you to do it, oh, man. It's a real challenge, guys. It's it's something that I think is extremely hard to do and hard to find. Uh, and really, I'd like to see the industry, it's kind of a part two here on this episode, is I would like to see the industry change how we do things. Um, I would like to see more of a focus on the quantitative skills, the quantitative training, and the rigor. And then again, promoting those that are extremely quantitative and trying to figure out how do you make them better managers of people. And I think often if you find people that are extreme quants that just love quant finance and quantitative analytics and you know data science machine learning i think often that rubs off on the people around them uh, but i also don't see a reason why you can't have a manager that makes significantly less than the employees um, i know this kind of turns business on its head somewhat at least in america uh, especially for those with an mba or finance or business degree you have this little fairy tale where you have your hierarchy and those at the top make the most and those at the bottom make the least and of course, in their little minds as well, they assume that those at the top are having the most impact and those at the bottom have the least impact. Uh, I think tech's done a better job of actually taking these people that are individual contributors, that are leading the business, that are just very impactful, that the company cannot live without, and making them so efficient and so I don't know, good at their jobs, right? they just love it so much, they'll stay there forever. And I don't see a reason why you should encourage people to get to like a level five out of level 100 and then tell them like, you got to make a decision now if you want to keep going on the quant path and keep doing this, but you're not going to get paid as much. You're not going to get a good title. 
Um, or you can give everything up, you can make more money, but you're not gonna be doing what you trained for. So I would like to see the industry change a lot in this scenario. I would like to see it move more towards the tech realm where we see, I don't know, I don't know if you wanna call them incubators, but super quant teams where you're so focused on doing what you do, you need to get good management that understands the quant realm. Again, finding quants that are great managers is like a needle in a haystack, right? It's really an impossible task to do. But at the same time, right, if you find an amazing manager, there's no reason you can't have the world's most amazing manager managing quants. But then again, you need to leave more leeway in here, kind of more wiggle room for these quants to be making the crucial decisions here. So, I mean, as an example, right, let's say we're building a rocket ship, we're gonna go to Mars. Uh, you wouldn't want someone that's a manager making decisions who has very little understanding of the quant realm, especially when it comes down to something very technical that could make, I don't know, a make or break if people would die on the ship or not. And often that decision is not as clear as like, you know, option A is extremely safe and option B is really risky. Often it's like option A has these advantages and these disadvantages. Option B has these advantages and these disadvantages. And it really just depends. And then the person that should be making the decision is that that is most technical that can kind of see the impact across the board. So again, you have some management in here, but really those you know analytical people, the scientists, the quants in different areas and different fields. Um, again, you, you want that smart person making the decision. You don't want just a management layer saying, hey, let me make a tough decision. And if I fail and people die, you know, just fire me and I'll go find something else to do. So anyways, the short answer here is there's not an easy way to go from, there's not like an easy path in the quant realm. Um, you'll see a lot of quants, or at least a few of the well-known ones, end up going back to academia to do teaching or running you know, quant programs. Uh, a lot of them end up retiring, going into different industries. Uh, I do see quite a few as well that are in, I don't know, their 50s who have just kind of stayed in that role of just being a quant. And then you do see the ones that break out and become management. Uh, but often I think they, they're more interested in the management side than they were the quant side. They just did enough quant work to kind of get by. Um, so those are my two cents here on the quant path, the quant realm. You guys, it's not an easy decision to make. Um, I think everybody in their mind thinks, oh, more money, better title, easy decision. But if you really like what you do or you love and are passionate about quant finance, uh, the further you get taken away, for example, like a CRO has almost zero impact and understanding on the quant realm. Uh, they should, but they just don't have the insight typically to really dive into those nitty gritty details. And then you become so dependent on the people below you, often a lot gets lost in translation through a chain, especially in a massive firm where you could have 10, 15 layers of people. So anyways, those are my two cents. Those are some things to think about. Um, again, I'm not a genius on this, guys. I've I'm still trying to walk the balance between the two, somehow hold on to both at the same time without getting torn in half. Uh, but that's just my opinion on this. This is what I'm attempting to do career-wise, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So thanks for listening. If you found this video or this podcast helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or leave a review on Apple Podcasts. And as always, until next time.